going Mate, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, Jim, yeah. Mark, are you busy at the moment? What are you up to right now? Yeah, I, I am busy, yeah, um, in the sense that I've got lots of little things going on at once. I'm kind of doing a juggling act. Uh, I, I also do a bit of freelance audio production and sound design work, and yes. I'm now doing a little bit of that for some theatre companies here over the next uh, you know, two months. So I've got a couple of those things. I'm doing a, a, the sound and music for an Indigenous animation over in WA. I'm doing voiceover work for a new Indigenous animation in Sydney. I've got a short film project up in Broome this week, which I'll fly out to tomorrow, which we're shooting um, out in Kununurra, out in El Questro, which will be beautiful. I haven't been back in my home country up there for a while, so it's long overdue. And, um, yeah, I've got the premiere of um, uh, Porno coming out later this month. Yeah, That's right. 21st, I think, at the Sun Theatre in Yarraville. Mark, are you still doing any odd jobs? Odd jobs? I feel like all my jobs are odd. You know uh, what I mean. In what sense? You um, know what I mean. Are you... Waxing floors, waiting tables, are you doing anything to supplement your income from your art? Well, you know, look, I'm, I'm no longer on the corner of Barclay anymore, which is nice. But, um, look, uh, it's been a while since I sort of dabbled in the hospitality, which is what I was doing when I first got across to the East Coast and started living here in Melbourne about three and a half years ago. Um, that was all pretty short-lived. I think one of the things I've been trying to do is just manage my funds, which is something I've never been biologically good at. But um, I think in the last six months I've started to just stretch, you know, my, my earnings from project to project. Say there's, you know, maybe a two-month gap or three months. I'm just starting to, I think they call it maturity or something, but I'm just kind of glimpsing well, you know, Mark Colesmith, are you saying that you have learned to budget? I'm, tr I'm almost. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to commit to this on air, but I'm getting close. I feel like, you know. You're you know, nearly I'm, there. I'm meditating on it, okay. yeah. Well, mate. We get a bit of crowd to cover. I'm not going to keep you here too long, but first order of the day is porno. Oh yes. Describe the film and the character you play in it. Um, it's 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 a unique film. Um, it's uh, look, it's it's set in the suburb of Footscray, and it follows um, the lives of twelve different characters. Uh, Thirteen, if you include the community of Footscray itself, which I think is the lead character in the in the story. Um, and uh, one of those characters is Paulie Carr, who is a young, uh, questionable, wayward uh, guy who's um, just trying to get by and. Um, and uh, he's, he's found some friendship in the form of Mel Kennard, who I uh, acted alongside for pretty much the entire film, uh, which was an absolute um, blast. How would you describe the character's arc in the film? Oh, I don't want to give too much away. Uh, sure. Um, in general terms. Yeah. Hmm. I think... Um, look, I, I, I've known a few Paulie cars, and they're kind of... They're kind of like walking miracles. They're sort of, you know, you just kind of like you're like, how 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 are you still alive? Is is sort of like you know, the question I've asked myself when I've met my own Paulie car. But they they do it. They have this way of sort of, you know, the, the, their home is is the is the urban labyrinth, and you know they're they're a part of their street man, their ghetto, and. Um, and that's that's uh, that's the crew I was trying to roll with on the lead up to the shoot. So. I want to ask you about research, but first, I just wanted to get this notion of community mm. clear. Absolutely, I, I have I have already stepped into the trap of presume when we're talking to indigenous actors to presume things mm -hmm. that they have a hypersensitivity to this issue or to that issue. Mm -hmm. So I'm treading very carefully here. But as an indigenous actor, did you find the aspect of community and seeing the community as a character something that was different from the other actors on the set i'm i'm going to answer that question with the hope that i've interpreted it correctly um i found this film incredibly for for, for a few reasons incredibly easy to drop into and it did come from the sense of community and the openness and the diversity in the backgrounds of everybody that had kind of amalgamated in this narrative. Um, there, there was like, you know, it wasn't, um, it wasn't sort of East Coast cosmopolitan, you know, like, uh, 
mainstream sort of stuff. It's it's indie. It's you know it's indie and it's um yeah it's about like multiculturalism. There's you know every every character is like is um yeah it's just this huge diversity from the background of every person that we meet in this story. I, you know by the time I, I was you know 11, 12, I'd lived in a different town in this country um, at least every two years. So my mother lectured Indigenous mental health and she was she held postings across Australia so for two years I was in Lismore and then I was up in Brisbane and then I was across in Perth and then Darwin and Alice Springs and so I've got this like um, I've got this really wide sort of um, mosaic of experiences that that make up Australia to me um, but I also got really good at meeting people and just like slotting in and sort of like that kind of chameleon phenomenon. I got really good at that. I was sort of forcibly practiced at it. Um, and that was something that um, seemed innate for this. It's sort of, you know, when I, when I jumped onto set, even though I didn't get the chance to, you know, work with all, you know, a lot of these other amazing cast and we have such an ensemble. Um, it's it's great still, ensemble. Yeah, it is. Um, it still felt like, you know, um, we'd all kind of entered into it for similar reasons, I guess. You are very into research. What was the research you did for this role? Um, I could talk a little bit about it. Uh, I, I wanted to, I wanted to hear what the, um, the cadence and the tone of, um, or, or I wanted to try and search for it. I don't know if I necessarily found it, but I was searching for like a, a tone and a cadence in speech on the street here in Melbourne. So I actually spent time on the street and I kind of kept sort of pushing the envelope a little bit once I started doing that about four weeks out from shoot. Uh, that ended up, that eventuated me not just hanging out in Footscray, but like north side. Um, I was basically in tracks, like um, trading, you know, lottery uh, scratchies for cigarettes with guys on the street, um, in trackies, begging for loose change off people passing by. I ended up in the Gatwick Hotel. You know, I had this, it was like this crazy experience of walking out of the Gatwick in, in, in <laughs> St Kilda at three in the morning, stepping out and there on the pavement is this guy who's like passed out with like a medical response team trying to like revive him. And there's his mate standing right beside him, standing over him, looking, looking down at him going, you need to go to hospital. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, shit. So like this, uh, yeah, I, I, I was, you know, I did, I did, I did exploration. I don't know if we get to call, give it, you know, the caliber of they tout the title of research, but I, I, I certainly did explore. You know, I think um, I think the art that stands out to me is always, you know, uh, an indication of a search. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I go searching without knowing exactly what I'm looking for, but I just kind of grab stuff and, you know. Because for Lars came to Darwin, you researched the mob uh, whose land the character in the film drives through, Udnadatta. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, look, I mean, this even, even, what, the, even the word research feels a little alien to me. Um, I mean, I guess, what's like, a better word? like as, a, as an early sort of trajectory, like, I guess you can use that word. But um, it's sort of more than just research. It's, it's, not, it's not as necessarily theoretical. Like, sometimes I'm just looking for an experience. And with the work that I've been doing, and by no means do I feel I'm anywhere near really getting achieving something that you know I, I feel really strongly confident about yet and maybe that's a good thing because it keeps me searching but um, every now and then I go into a scene and I come out the other end and I feel like something's happened and that occasion you know very early on when I started working was such a rare thing that I didn't even really know what it was but now in the last in particular the last two years I've started to to get a sense of that and that's what I'm kind of after and so I guess I'm sort of just like trying to make up my own way of finding that experience in a scene and a lot of that's to do with preparation a lot of that's comes from other people it doesn't come from me I need to go meet those people I need to spend time with others and they inform me so I'm eager to know what difference it made meeting the actual mob from that particular 
Oh, it was, it was, it was, it was what a difference, it, like it was the, the difference between, um, it was the difference between, uh, a performance that I was happy with, uh, and a performance that I wasn't happy with. I believe that totally. I believe that, uh, I need to give almost all credit to my work on, on Jeremy Sims' film to the people of Unadada. Yeah. Because they like I turned up there a week before the shoot and mm. just you know brought around for all the for all the brothers and uncles mm. and just explained, hey, guess what? They're gonna come shoot this film here, and they all reckon that my character's from here, and I need you to reckon that and like bring me in and like teach me some lingo and and just like you know make me feel like I'm part of the community. And they did it. <laughs> they did that. So. Yeah. So it was a, a, a matter of really tweaking the character to accord with the people who were actually there. This is a bit of white man ignorance here, mm. because I guess an idiot's view, which is what I'm giving you now, is that he's playing a black fella, okay, they're on this cab ride journey through the guts of Australia, mm. what's the difference? And of course, there are so many different nations oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. have to acknowledge. Yeah, no, we had, we had over 30 language groups just in you know my mother's region up in the Kimberley. You know, I think that's that's one of the really common misconceptions about you know in, in Indigenous Australia is that it was one mob, and I think that's what's made it really, in some ways, particularly difficult to implement it into mainstream school curriculums and things like that. Because if you're going to do that, the best way to do it would be to implement the uh, you know cultural knowledge from the local area for every school, and you know education departments and all that. Sort of a bit of a you know kind of a them so <laughs> um, but you know the reality is yeah there is that you know that diversity across um, indigenous Australia and um, it, it wasn't as simple as me going oh you know I, I know my mum's language and I know where I grew up like you know our bush there I'll just use that and bring it over to there it wasn't um, I didn't feel comfortable with that what difference has last kept the Darwin made for you um, a big hit yeah, look, it found its audience, which is what you we got always. a lot of attention. Yeah, for a great performance, <laughs> a great performance, and an honest performance. Cool. cool. It wasn't patronising. It wasn't pretending anything. Yeah. You acknowledged problems that mm. exist mm. in those communities, which I think is one of the strengths of the film. Mm. So it's not just a great drama about a guy wanting to end his own life. It's a great insight into contemporary Indigenous culture. Yeah, I hope so. At the very least, just, you know, a young man from that world, you know, that's, you know, I always get sort of a bit um, cautious about, you know, feeling like I represent everyone. <laughs> you get onto that in a moment. But, but uh, did the film make a big difference to you? Did you start but yeah, look, more um, you, it, it found its audience and it, 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 um, it gained a really great critical response and, I mean, Everyone was really, a lot, a lot, not everyone actually, and I'm always interested in the people that criticise me, like, because um, I, I, I'm like, ah, yeah, that's a good point, mm. you know, or not, you know, that gives me something to think about. Um, with, with Praise, which is, I certainly got some with Last Cab to Darwin, I always kind of keep it at arm's reach, because, like, I have, I, I, st I don't feel like I have any control over whether somebody else likes what I do or not, you know, um, what the work means to the audience and what it means to me are two different things. So I have to do this balancing act of finding out what's important to me as an artist or as an actor that I want to kind of facilitate or explore or express using this and how much of that can I get away with before the director's like, no, 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 we're doing this, we're doing this movie, I don't know what you're doing. So <laughs> there's that balancing act. So as long as I feel like, as long as I feel like I can I can find something that's meaningful and important to me, for a selfish artist here, mm -hmm. um, for any role I do. Um, that's what I hold on to. And if other people like it, then that's just the icing on the cake and that's kind of, that's awesome and it could lead to more work and more opportunities, which is terrific. Yeah. <laughs>